In this video we're going to look at how sodium channel antidysrhythmic drugs work. First thing to realise is that the sodium channel exists in at least three different states. This is the sodium channel which is responsible for the rapid depolarization phase of the cardiac action potential. Drugs used to block the sodium channel work by decreasing this depolarization. So remember that the sodium channel at depolarized membrane potentials begins starts off in the closed state. The sodium channel has two gates. There's the usual gate that you expect to see in a voltage gated channel. This gate is opened and closed by the transmembrane voltage. At very negative potentials the gate is closed. It's opened as the potential becomes more positive. In addition to this usual voltage gate, there's an, an additional gate called the inactivation gate. Research has shown that this inactivation gate is caused by a ball and chain mechanism. A part of the protein extends into the cytoplasmic side of the cell and this ball is able to dock in the channel in order to be able to close it. So let's see what happens then during the cardiac action potential. At rest, the voltage gated sodium channels are in the closed state. This gate is closed, but the inactivation particle is out of its binding pocket. In other words, the inactivation gate is open. But because this gate is closed, sodium ions are not able to pass through the ion channel. When the cell becomes more depolarized, and in the case of the heart muscle, this is caused by the funny current, which is separate to the sodium channels. As depolarization occurs, sodium channels begin to pass from the closed state into the open state. And this is brought about by a probabilistic transition of the voltage gate into the open state. So we've moved from one conformation of the molecule to another one. And the probability of any one ion channel moving from the closed state to the open state is dependent upon the voltage. The probability of it being open increases with membrane depolarization. Of course, in the open state, sodium ions are able to pass through the ion channel into the interior of the cell. And this will cause further depolarization, which will cause more the probability of opening to increase even further. So more and more sodium channels open, and that explains the rapid depolarization phase of the action potential. However, at depolarization, depolarized potentials, in addition to increasing the probability of the transition from closed to open, it also favors the transition from the open state to the inactivated state. The inactivated state is caused by this inactivation ball physically binding to the ion channel in such a way that it closes the ion channel in a different way to the other gate. So now the voltage gate is open, but the inactivation gate is closed. In this conformation, sodium cannot enter the ion channel. What causes the transition from open to inactivated is depolarization. So the very thing which causes the opening of the channels then subsequently causes the inactivation of the channels. And that explains 
the first part of the repolarization here, as sodium channels close, and then the rest of the shoulder is due to calcium channels. Throughout the duration of the action potential, the depolarized state of the membrane constantly favors the inactivated conformation of the sodium ion channel. But when eventually repolarization occurs, what happens then is that this inactivated state, a transition from this state back to the closed state, becomes favored. So by hyperpolarizing the cell, you can now push this ball out and reclose this gate here. There's no opening in between, so this doesn't show up when you look at the currents going through the membrane, because both of these states are closed states. So the move from inactivated to closed requires repolarization of the membrane, and that only occurs when the action potential is finished.